Get started uh, all uh, for the 435 work session for a TIF update. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Yes, Ms. Cole? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Morrison? Here. Mr. Wolper? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carries. We're here today, uh, Mr. Lynn specifically, and I think others have had questions about TIF. And uh, Tom asked for a, a, a kind of a TIF update. Uh, I, in turn, asked Noel for a TIF update. So we're here for a TIF update. Noel, please. Thank you, Mayor. We put together, uh, there, was a, there was a number of TIF questions that were emailed out. Um, so I provided you all with uh, quick answers to those questions in front of you. I don't know uh, if it's important. No, I'm not. Heard. You need a microphone. How do we, how do we get oh. you mic'd? You can just pull that over. There's a long cord. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if we'll get to all the questions in there, but we'll, we'll definitely try. I thought it'd be helpful to start and go through, and a lot of the, a lot of the presentation I'll go through will give some of the answers to those. Uh, this is the City of Waterloo map. Um, this shows our eight existing TIP districts on the map. Um, we've also shown the different designations that they have. Downtown Waterloo is our oldest TIF district. It is an urban renewal or blight TIF district. Um, so it's in place to try and help clean up the downtown, how to bring projects downtown, but also to uh, help redevelop existing older portions of the area. Um, as a part of the downtown TIF district, we did expand that to include um, the John Deere uh, new manufacturing uh, project into the downtown TIF district, obviously with uh, the continued improvements by Deere and the continued need for some infrastructure extensions and improvements in that area. Um, it seemed like a good good idea to do that and take advantage of what Deer was trying to do, what they're trying to accomplish, and how we can help them. Um, also in the same area is the Rath Pit District. Of course, this is the former Rath Packing Plant area. It is also, um, as you can see on the map, designated in purple, so it's an urban renewal blight tip district. Um, obviously, with the bankruptcy of the Rath Corporation, the city of Waterloo actually acquired a lot of their land, um, tore down a lot of structures um, through the bankruptcy, vertical kill building, Cooper maintenance buildings, and then we've tried to work with companies such as Powers and Crystal and some smaller companies to come back in there and redevelop that area. Uh, we've also tried to utilize a, a large number of brownfield grants and resources, and the TIP district obviously helps us to bring back um, new infrastructure, new lot development into these areas as projects occur. Just to the north of that, this was expanded um, recently back in 2008 is the Logan TIF district. Um, it started up here at Logan Plaza. It was expanded down. Um, there's a large number of uh, neighborhood blocks in here that are not fully built out. So we expanded this down the Highway 63 corridor as a part of our partnership with the Iowa Department of Transportation to redevelop Highway 63. Um, as you may recall, probably about 10 years ago, there was a study, an environmental injustice study showing that there was a negative impact on Highway 63 going through this area because it was so close to some of the houses. As part of our working with the Iowa Department of Transportation over the years, they have committed to going in there and redeveloping that road. We have committed to try and work towards redevelopment along that roadway um, as well in partnership with them to try and create a better environment, try to create more economic development. So we followed that down to Highway 63 and again expanded it out here for some of these nearby neighborhoods to try to bring in some infill and new residential development in that area. And again, that is a blight and urban renewal one as well. Up here in the northwest side of the community is uh, the airport midport TIF. Um, this one's also listed as an urban renewal and blight. Um, there was a number of older industrial areas down along Airline Highway. It also goes down along Broadway. Um, the southern part being down here at the former Schultz Manufacturing Site, um, which is a brownfield uh, concerning area. So again, going through here and picking up a lot of these older industrial areas and plus some new areas. This is also listed in the uh, new market tax credit area. New market tax credit area is a federal designation that also talks about, it looks at the income status, it looks at the vacancy rates and all that of an area before it's approved for that. So with those criteria in mind, this one was shown as an urban renewal and blight area as well. Over here to the northeast site, um, this is one of our, this was built uh, or developed back in 1995, um, Northeast Industrial Park area. Of course, that was put out there because of John Deere and their northeast site in that area. 
Um, the Northeast Industrial Park area was developed to try and bring some of their suppliers, some of their subcontractors out near them, as well as give the city a good location for heavy industrial development. The Northeast Industrial Park area um, specifically has high um, amounts of infrastructure out there for heavy water, heavy sewer users. The Martin Road area here at 63 and Ridgeway. Um, Martin Road was the original uh, TIF district boundary. It was expanded since then to pick up some more development land, including the former Greyhound Park site. This is shown as an economic development TIF. One of the differences between the economic development TIFs and the blight uh, TIFs is that the economic development TIFs have a 20-year time span um, from their existence um, from the incurment of debt. The uh, blight ones do not have a time limit on them. The Martin Road one obviously again was put in place to try and help some of the existing uh, industries, Far Beverage and some of those O'Neill Steel to help bring them to the community and then that was expanded to try to redevelop the Greyhound Park site. Of course the Greyhound Park site um, had had a new road, Greyhound Drive built out there for the casino or for the dog track racing facility when that went under. Um, there was a large amount of land, 100 acres, owned by a trust that had absolutely no intention of doing anything with it um, until we could get a developer. We got a local developer here by including it into the TIF to take that under um, his, his development, it provide infrastructure out there and partner with us to try to get some new businesses out there. The San Martin area, um, this was founded, uh, this small square here shows the original uh, GMAC building. That was the first area out there that was TIFed. Um, since then it's been expanded as we've rezoned land, brought Shawless Road across the, the bottom there, but it primarily follows Highway 20 along the San Martin Corridor on both sides. Um, that TIF district was expanded to specifically compete with other Iowa communities um, along the Highway 20 corridor and other corridors that are along I-35, I-80 and all that. Um, a lot of businesses obviously are looking for transportation as a main focus and visibility. And we believe that uh, that helps them work with that. That also uh, brought forth the uh, Ainsboro Interchange as a part of working on that. And BGM had a large expansion of about 400 jobs back when the Ainsboro Interchange was completed. And the last TIF district that we've worked on recently has been the Crossroads Area TIF District um, back in 2013. Um, this was recommended to move ahead with it. Um, Crossroads was built night back in 1968 as a shopping center. It's obviously got some aging infrastructure, aging structures in place. We like to work in tor towards bringing new development there, new retail there, um, as well as revitalizing existing shopping center. Um, that kind of tells you that a little bit of the history and the designations of each one um, to get a little bit more specific as to how we move ahead with projects. Again, we get a lot of uh, leads um, either directly or through the state or through Greater City of I Alliance. Um, and they're looking for certain types of things. For retail users, obviously, we, we, have, uh, we have the Crossroads area. We have some retail destinations in downtown, and we have Logan Plaza. Um, when they are looking for heavy industrial, again, depending upon the amount of heavy water and sewer, um, we have the <coughs> industrial park to try and draw those types of businesses. Um, heavy industrial, rail access, uh, we have rail at the Northeast Industrial Park, we have rail at the Midport area as well. And then Business Park, Office Park, we have Downtown Waterloo, we have San Martin, we have Martin Road. Um, sometimes the Rath area um, for some types of mixes in between the industrial and the office park. I don't know if you want me to get into the questions specifically, um, otherwise you know, what does a TIF district do? Obviously, the, the simple answer of that is once a TIF district is designated, um, there's a base that's set, any new taxable value created in there, 100% of that goes to the city, whereas normally we're getting about 42% of the tax increment from new projects. Um, so it allows the city to invest more, um, do more things to, draw, to try and draw projects here because we're getting a faster return on, on the new taxable value and taxes paid. Reason for that is because that new taxable value, the assumption is it wouldn't have existed if we didn't give the incentives. If you just had bare land there, no incentives, and you kept bare land, all the taxing bodies would keep getting the same amount. By adding value, cities are allowed to pay for the incentives and the infrastructure out of that additional increment. That's the real purpose of it. And that's a good two po point too, Michelle, that you know a lot of uh, other entities, other cities in Iowa. Um, use TIF districts to draw projects. Um, if, if we wouldn't have TIF districts, we'd have a lot of projects that we could not have competed with other communities to get yeah, here. No, I wouldn't say a lot of others. I'd say every city in Iowa. 
does. Uh, do, how would council like to proceed? There are a list of questions here. Would you like, Noel, to just read the answers to the questions, or would you like to open the floor? It's, it's your privilege. Well, everybody here can read, okay. I would think. Um, so perhaps if there's something that somebody just is, has a compelling um, that they feel hasn't been answered that we could handle it that way. I just have a quick question. Okay. You Fine. know, um, part of the challenge a couple years ago on the state level with cities uh, in regards to TIF was um, communities were TIFing one business to move to a different part of the city and the state uh, was a little, um, it began to taking a look into those challenges a little bit more and making sure that people were actually being good stewards and bringing in new businesses. Was that kind of the situation in Iowa City or Coralville, I believe? Yeah, the one that uh, really got them fired up was a, there was a Yonkers um, that was moving from Iowa City to Coralville. Um, Coralville specifically gave incentives to the Yonkers to build a new store and they actually gave them uh, more incentives the faster that they would move and, and leave their existing location in Iowa City and that obviously had Iowa City upset. Mm -hmm. And another question too, um, when a, when a, um, and I don't know if this was flood or if this was TIF, when one um, business moves to another city, do we have to sign off on something? Didn't we have a situation where a business moved to Evansdale and we had to sign off or? There, then in some of the new legislation, it talks about you cannot give incentives to a business to leave one community to go to another through the TIF. Um, there was a business that was a renting uh, space in the uh, River, Plaza uh, Plaza. River Plaza building, and they wanted to go down to LaPorte City and, and build their own building. Um, and the city of LaPorte obviously wanted to give them incentives to do that, um, and we did recommend against that. But it passed eventually. It did. It did, yeah. yeah. They're still here. Are they still renting the space? Yep. So they're probably still building down there, I guess, or I'm, I'm not sure. I'm curious about that. Yeah, I noticed that the other day. And the one thing that came up on that in terms of the flood was they, they were a recipient of a... Uh, some of the flood money had given free rent for six months for people going back and investing in areas that had been <coughs> flooded. Um, and they took advantage of that from the state program, <coughs> not a city program. I, I will just add, uh, Council, that I, I wasn't here Thursday morning for the agenda meeting, was in a, uh, Des Moines for league business, but I do understand, I, I think, Steve, I think you brought it up about having maybe a, an open forum, a, a, a town hall type meeting about TIF. Uh, wh what I would like to do in lieu of that, at least on the short, short term, is uh, the league has uh, an, an excellent uh, document. It's called Snapshot of Tax Increment Financing. The document itself is 17 pages. Uh, we have put a link on our website so that if anybody has any questions about TIF, if you go to the City of Waterloo website on the front page, there is a link on the front page of the website that will take you to this document. Uh, if there's anyone out there that doesn't have a computer that would like to have this document, uh, I will be glad to make them for you. Contact the mayor's office. Uh, I will print these within reason. I'm not going to print a truck, truck full of them, but I, I, I think if you can't find it on the website, uh, I, I will provide you with a copy of this snapshot of tax increment financing. Uh, it, it, TIF is... is um, uh, I was going to say it's, it's confusing, and, and it's not, the basis of it is really not that confusing, but it certainly can be. Uh, this does an excellent job of, of, uh, of explaining what TIF is, and what it can be used for, and what it can't, and how it's used, and where it's used, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, would like to get that out if anybody would like to, to see that. So uh, go to the website, call the mayor's office, whatever. I will be glad to supply you with this. Uh, with this. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. No. How do we how do we score um, tips to know if they're working? I mean, how do, how do we measure? Do we know how many jobs each tip brings in? Do we know what kind of investment people? I'm sure you have these numbers someplace. But you know, the public sometimes says, "Well, you have all these tips, but our population keeps going down, so they must not be working." But they must be working if we're investing this much money in them. Is, um, is there a way to, and more importantly, is there, should we at some time say this one's not working and we're going to get rid of it? 
I know at one point, you know, we did kind of a 10-year uh, summary of development projects um, that has happened in the city of Waterloo, and um, I believe those were broken out by TIF, so you can kind of see what's happened in each TIF district. I mean, we are, we are generally seeing projects in each TIF district each year. So, I mean, I would say they're all successful in, in obtaining their goal of bringing new business, new taxable value here. Um, obviously, we'd like some of them to go faster than others, but at the same time, we don't want to put a project out here in the Northeast Industrial Park that does not need rail or heavy water and sewer um, and, and have that site gone when they could go somewhere else if it's just a warehousing project or something like that. So some of the TIFs, aren't going to see as much action as the others based on what we want them there for and what infrastructure we have in place and preserve that for projects that are more appropriate for those locations. But otherwise, we are seeing good activity in all of them, and that's, that's why they're there. Do any of those TIFs, uh, are they, they making, generating more income than they need? Do, do we have excess, you know, we've talked about this last year about maybe transferring some money. If, the, if they're flush to help with police and fire, there's become a lot of complex issues with that with the new laws at the state level if when you get the reports in around Thanksgiving time is we have you have you see all the reports we file we, those happen about December 1st every year and unfortunately for people that just start in January we did that before you started but there are a few where we might have more cash this year than what we needed to pay the debt this year but there, are, there has to be more debt than revenue in total, or we couldn't collect revenue. So when you say excess revenue, a TIF can't ever have that. We, we have to have expenses already on the books in order to take that TIF revenue and pay it. I will say over the last couple of years with the changes at the state level, and particularly right now with the new corporate rollback and also the new multi-residential property classification I'm very conservative and I'm very reluctant to even think about releasing any TIF value until we have a better idea of what those two things are going to do to our property values and TIFs because we created the TIFs we sold bonds gave incentives based on getting increment to repay that with now the state has arbitrarily come in and said well sorry, we're going to take 10% of that corporate value because we don't think you should have gotten it. And all our decisions about funding were made based on different assumptions before that rollback came into being. Same thing with the multi-residential category. And I am working with the assessor's office. We still really don't have information from them because they're still work making the determinations. We'll pro Hopefully by December we'll know more about what's going to and it may not even be till April. They, I think they're committed to April. I'm hoping <laughs> they'll get done sooner because that will start impacting our revenue, particularly in the downtown TIF for the multi-residential. So while it's possible to release revenue, and particularly the economic development TIFs, I don't think that's a good strategy to release revenue early because those sunset in 20 years, if you have any more development that you need to do in that area, you, you won't be able to do it with TIF if you have released the revenue to the taxing bodies. So those are decisions that have to be made carefully, I guess I would say. We do amend the TIF areas as more land is added that in an economic development TIF, that would create a new 20 year cycle for that new piece of land. But we've we created our TIFs in large blocks originally, which means we need to we need to be careful about releasing the revenue. The twenty year cycle is only for the additional land or that does the entire TIF now become another twenty years? I believe it's just for the new portion of the of what you add to it. Yep. Steve, you had a question? Just real quickly, in the bottom question here about have we ever released any revenue, how much, when, what was the money used for? And the answer says yes from the Northeast Industrial Park area. The funds are put into the general fund. So is that inferring that's, is that the one and only time that's ever happened or is that just the most recent? That's, that's the only TIF that I'm aware of that we've released value. And it's not quite accurate about that we release the money to the general fund. When we don't release money, we release value. So when we release value, it then goes, it's used for all our levies. Some would be general fund 810, some would be employee benefits, all the different levy categories we have. When we release it though, we also release 
the 53% to the school district and the 15% then goes back to the county and the other taxing bodies. So when you release it, it goes a lot of different places, not only that. And I have asked the county if they can provide me something showing how much value we released. In Blackhawk County, the reports that I get don't really say, here's, the val here's your total value, here's what you released. We make a request and we say, I need a million dollars to pay my bonds and my rebates. And they do work their magic and decide that translates into X many millions of dollar of value. And I don't, I don't have reports of that that I'm aware of. I'm, we're trying to find that out so we can tell you exactly. Sure. And we did that just for a few years. So, now I'm confused. So when you release, <laughs> I'm making it worse. That's not good. <laughs> release some money out of a TIF, and you know I thought it was good. We get that money, we can go to police and fire. But when we do that, then everybody else gets their cut. Then it's yes. back to the regular way you would tax a property. Exactly. Okay. So we get we would get eight dollars and ten cents per thousand that can be used for police, fire, and other general fund. We would also get whatever our employee benefits levy is, the, the library levy, everything on our tax certification, but you're right. But then the county and the school get theirs too. Yes, so we, would, we lose about half the revenue because um, debt service levies never go in the TIF. So if the school district has a debt service levy and they do have a PEPL, they keep that no matter what. The county keeps their debt service levy no matter what. We don't ever get that as TIF revenue, but when we release it, then they get the operating portions. Okay. So. No. Uh, in one of the uh, items that we have on the agenda tonight, it refers to acquisition of land under an original master agreement for long-term purchase, and this is in reference also to a TIF district. Are there master plan agreements for uh, different areas of town that are included within the TIF districts? This is, uh, this is the only probably master plan agreement we have for a land acquisition currently in place. Now, one of the questions that, uh, that was asked, uh, Tom asked before the meeting started was, you know, what do you use the money for in each TIF? And each, each TIF plan has a list of projects in there of things that we need to work on in the TIF district. So if we need sewer infrastructure, water infrastructure, roads, things like that, improvements, those are all listed in the plan as, as things out there. Land acquisitions generally listed in quite a few of them um, for potential growth and development in those areas. So th there's only one actual land agreement in place right now. That's in the San Marnin one that's on the council agenda tonight, but there's there's other phased things that are planned out in the other TIF districts, but not in that same format. For land acquisition, you mean? Correct. Okay, so there there might be something in. So some some of the others will some of the others will say, hey, we want to buy some more land out here. There's not a master agreement, but we have purchased land in some of those other areas when the opportunities come up that we made we thought made sense for where we had our infrastructure and growth and development. And that would include the uh, the Logan Avenue uh, uh, area there. The, development Correct. acquisition land in that area all the way out to city limits yes okay mr Hart. no just a quick question um do we tiff at 100 percent every time or is it based upon the value of the project and those things in terms of the rebate you mean yeah um each each tip district there's an economic development policy plan that has the policies in there for what we do in each tip district generally we do not do 100 percent um, usually five years at 50% is a pretty standard one in there for industrial projects or projects under a million. Once it gets above a million, we're usually looking at uh, free land and some kind of a tax rebate schedule. Guys, we got to keep moving. I, uh, clearly, we should have maybe added more time for this, but we didn't. We have two more uh, meetings before the Finance Committee, so uh, uh, we need motion, to. Motion to adjourn. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Yes, Mr. Hart? Here. Oh, yeah. Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mr. Here. All right, that's a roll call. Take a motion to approve. Motion to approve the agenda. agenda. Motion has been made with the proper second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have an agenda. Uh, Director Choka, 
Where'd you go? All right. <laughs> you can take it away. So chronic nuisance updates. Uh, Dan Trelka, Director of Safety Services. Based on our enforcement of the uh, ordinance thus far and our experience at one trial, uh, this, uh, Dave Zellhofer and I got together and we're just recommending uh, a couple of minor adjustments to the ordinance. The very first one is under 553, chronic nuisance properties prohibited. The uh, defense attorney was making an argument that uh, uh, the property owner, he argued that the property owner wouldn't knowingly be using his property as a chronic nuisance property. Uh, so uh, to simplify the ordinance, we're simply taking out the word knowingly and cleaning up the sentence a little bit better. Uh, I have the changes in red. Uh, the words that I want struck out, I have struck. And uh, also under 555, to add clarity to the ordinance, it wasn't clear enough that if chronic nuisance activity continues at the property, they would be cited. So we added that simple little phrase in red to clarify that if chronic nuisance activity continues after it's been designated as a chronic nuisance property, they could potentially be cited. Director. After you, sir. Um, one of the questions I had uh, when reading this over was in 554, under enforcement, there's the last sentence underlined, any nuisance activities uh, and um, reported by the owner of the property, a person designated by the owner of the property, or that are deemed as domestic abuse shall not be counted. And I just would, can you explain that? Yes, uh, especially, we, we want to have a dialogue with the owner. If the owner's trying to help us with these problems that are occurring at the properties, we're not going to hold that against them. So if they call or their bar manager calls, let's say there's a problem patron at a bar. If somebody who's associated with the bar calls, we're not going to count that against them. Uh, domestic abuse, abuse violations, sexual assaults are another one uh, that we don't count because that would likely be a violation of the Violence Against Women Act. So, uh, so we don't want to discourage people from calling domestic related or domestic abuse incidents into us. We want to encourage them to call us so that we can investigate them and uh, take appropriate action. Uh, a good example of, you know, it, a, a property has to. Uh, it's difficult for them to have a call at their property that reaches the threshold of a chronic nuisance. One good example is, is there was a, a bar lately, the Honeycomb Hideout. We've been there 83 times, and only four or five of the calls reached the threshold of being chronic nuisance calls. Uh, because the bar owners, they are trying to help us. The bar owners are calling them in. With a lot of the bars, the problem we're seeing is they're having problems in their parking lots and we need them to address the problems in their parking lots. And uh, it's interesting that they've been responding fantastically. They've been hiring security, putting up cameras. So the ordinance has been effective and it's been working well. And so if, if, if an owner uh, or business owner is making an attempt to communicate, to take care of some of the problems on the property and continue to keep that uh, dialogue or communication open, um, the city is willing to work with them is what you're saying. Absolutely, and we've had that occur with two bars already. They're willing to work with us, we're willing to work with them. Um, Chief, one of the questions that I also received, and I think I said it on Thursday, was a conversation of a residential and commercial, and there not being a distinction between both, because some of the commercial properties, bars or whatever, could possibly have a thousand people coming through it during a week, whereas a household could probably have three, four people coming through there the week steadily. But right now the ordinance treats both of those almost the same. So has there been any discussion about making a distinction between both of those or some way to kind of balance out the parity between both? There is not. There hasn't, a uh, distinction hasn't been made. There hasn't been attempt, an attempt to do that, uh, but uh, you know, my philosophy is, e even though they may have a thousand people come through, uh, we've got hundreds of bars in the city that are able to make it work. If there are two or three that can't, uh, they're taking advantage of the tax dollars, and we sh and they should pay their fair share. Any other any other questions, Council? Okay. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Do we have any chronic? nuisance property in the city right now that we're really hammering 
Uh, we've got about 15 that are designated as, a, uh, as chronic nuisance properties. Uh, and I've issued, I believe, about four or five citations. Uh, one we did, uh, the judge found the defendant not guilty. Uh, for an odd reason, the, uh, the, the person we cited didn't show up in court. It was somebody else. So the judge, but they had the same name. It was junior and senior. And the judge realized that halfway through the trial. And uh, uh, her ruling was, or magistrate, I should say. It was not a judge. It was a magistrate. Ruled that because it wasn't the defendant who was cited that she would find him not guilty. Uh, we thought about refiling the charges, but... Uh, uh, we thought we'd improve the ordinance and see if the bar does better, and if they don't, we'll simply cite them again under the new ordinance. Uh, we, we're, we're going to trial next week on a couple more, uh, and they were cited because they simply did not provide me with an abatement plan. I mean, it's a sim we simply ask you, give me a written abatement plan, and, and let's see if this will work, and we'll provide input on the abatement plan. But if they give me nothing, what are we supposed to do? So we cited them. Is that fusion bar over there on Laporte Road, one of them? They have been designated a chronic nuisance property, and they've, uh, they're putting up more cameras. Again, the problem was in their parking lot. Uh, they put up some cameras in the parking lot. They've hired additional security personnel. They've been fantastic in their dialogue to improve the problems they've been having. Yeah, and uh, just um, last question. Uh, once, a, once a property becomes uh, a chronic nuisance, is it always? A chronic nuisance, or if they uh, gone a year or something and things have diminished, how how can they get off of that list? One year without a chronic nuisance call, and then they're off the list. A chronic nuisance call or an elevated situation where they have like three or four of those. Well, and it's uh, you know this uh, the ordinance has turned into a lot more work than I uh, I, <laughs> I thought it would be. <laughs> So they've been coming to my attention uh, because citizens have been bringing them to my attention or the officers have been bringing them to my attention. Right. If we don't catch it, let me put it this way. If I don't catch it in a year period, they're free and clear. Okay. I think that's what some people were worried about, too, that they're always, no matter how much they tried or progress had been made, they'll always continue that designation. Yeah, and we're doing all we can to work with them to, uh, to make it work. Dan, what about a change of ownership? Uh, then they get a clean slate. Then we start over. Right, next. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? We got another meeting. Hypothetical situation, uh, Director Trolka, in a domestic abuse situation, uh, the domestic abuse has occurred, no contact order issued, and now we've got the uh, victim allowing the uh, no contact person back in the home. How is that handled? That would not count as a uh, <coughs> chronic nuisance violation. <coughs> Excuse me, but the courts would still hold them accountable for the violation of itself. And why would that not count as uh, if it was reported that there was another incident there? Because in, uh, even if it smells of domestic abuse or if it's the result of a domestic abuse incident, we don't count it. We don't even want to go there for this particular ordinance. Okay. Thank you. All right. I think we got another meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Committee to order. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Yes, Mr. Wilker? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Ms. Cole? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lund? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second on the agenda. Any questions, discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign that motion passes. Someone will take number one, please. To move that we approve the request from the building official maintenance administrator for authorization to begin the civil service process for the property safety inspector and make an appointment. Second. A motion a second on that request. Do you need to talk to Craig about that? Do you have any questions for Craig? That's one of the new positions, correct, Craig? Yes. Just wanted to affirm that. Quick question for Craig, though. So. Craig, have you leveraged any technology yet that will help offset some of the work? I mean, are we just bringing in people to do manual work that we should be leveraging technology for? 
like being able to pay with a credit card or being able to submit a form online so there's not a bunch of manual work yes we are work currently working on that um, nothing I guess is up and running yet on those two things you just talked about but we are currently working on those um, my goal would be to hopefully have those by um, up and running soon by like the end of the year okay but this person isn't being brought in to do manual work right this is this, a this person position. no this is inspection position right. this person will not do that clerical type work you're talking about any other questions hearing none madam clerk would roll call please mr welper yes mr hartz yes Ms. cole yes mr jones yes mr schmidt yes mr lind yes mr morrison yes and that motion passes Mr. Chairman, item number two, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve a request from Waste Management Services Superintendent for authorization to make an appointment to the position of Clerk 1. Second. We have a motion, a second on this request. Any discussions on that? Any questions? Mr. Chairman, is that, so. is that salary correct? $65,000 for Clerk 1? Is that? With That's benefits. with benefits. Oh, that's with the benefits. Oh, where are you going to apply? Because there's plus. So it's plus benefits. benefits. Is it a typo? Because <laughs> it is. Because I was about ready to apply. I was going to say I was going to get on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm in You're line and ahead of you. Any other questions? Hearing none. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Motion <coughs> to adjourn. Second. Motion a second on adjournment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you. Finance Committee meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you please read the roll? Ms. Cole? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Motion approve the agenda is proposed and also the minutes of August 25th. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have an agenda. Madam Chairperson, I'd be just delighted Thank to you. take that one item. <laughs> we have, uh, Knock yourself out. Glad I didn't rest up for this. <laughs> we have Rusty Zay, Randy Shepard, and Troy Deed going to the aircraft live fire training at the <coughs> Eastern Iowa Airport in Cedar Rapids from uh, September 24th through September 25th at a cost up, not to exceed up to $900. Second. Motion, second, discussion. All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have a few pre -offs. Madam Chairperson. Thank you. Um, first one, airport, $2,193 for broom bristles and spacers for high-speed runway broom. Building maintenance, $20,983.37 plus $250 shipping and handling for 110 tables and carts for Five Sullivan Brothers Convention Center. Central Garage, $3,059.32 for turbo replacement for ambulance number 334. Leisure services, $3,000. T-shirts for participants in the Mayor's Fun Run. Leisure services, $5,424. 12 ginkgo trees. Police, $4,650 plus $35 shipping and handling for 100 training. 50 field, 50 field use, and 50 non-conductive SIM taser cartridges. <coughs> and traffic, sure. traffic operations, $3,200 for 500 street light connectors and covers. Traffic operations, $8,438.40 plus $200 shipping and handling for 20 packs of left arrows, 10 packs of right arrows. Traffic operations, $1,430 for 52-inch by 12-foot galvanized sign tubing. 
waste management services twelve thousand nine hundred sixty dollars plus one hundred dollars shipping and handling for Hayward Gordon rotating assembly for digester sludge recirculation pump waste management services one thousand five hundred ninety five dollars for color online an interactive safety management tool to your subscription that's second we have a motion and a second to have discussion. Seeing none, all in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I move that we approve two budget line item amendments, which are on file in Ms. Sher's office. And Actually, project budgets. Project budgets, excuse me, which are on file in Ms. Sher's office. And also that we pay the bills this week, which are one million, three thousand five hundred dollars and sixty seven cents one comma zero zero three comma five zero zero point six seven second we have a motion and a second discussion seeing none all in favor vote by the sign of aye uh -huh. aye opposed same sign motion to adjourn second all in favor aye we're adjourned thank you back on schedule yes we are we know how to do that to this uh, Tuesday, September 2nd, regularly scheduled meeting at Waterloo City Council. Uh, welcome to all of you who are in the audience and those that might be watching us on our public access television channel. Also, Madam Clerk, would you start us by reading the roll, please? Certainly. Ms. Cole? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Morrison? Here. Mr. Walper? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. If you would all join me, please, in standing for just a moment of silent reflection or prayer. Thank you very much. Our pledge tonight is going to be led by Mr. Larry Smith, our superintendent of Waste Management. Larry, please. Please join in the pledge to our flag. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may be seated. 
Mr. Mayor. Mr. Park. I move that we approved an amended agenda, and that is the change in items number 13 and 14, and that's adding the motion to suspend the rules and the motion to consider and pass for the third time and adopt the ordinance. Also, with the, also um, in number uh, 16, we add resolution resetting date of bid opening and public hearing in conjunction with the FY 2015 sidewalk repair assessment program, contract number 864. And also with the move of an amended agenda, also move that we approve the minutes of August 25th's regular session. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding the amended agenda or the minutes for the last session? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, we're going to start tonight with a proclamation uh, with our good friend. Uh, who, who are you out there? Who Are you coming up? Mary, Mary. you're coming, even though you, you're crippled or whatever you are? Oh, <laughs> come on up, please. Mary Potter and, and, and friends. Crippled, huh? Broken. Oh. I want to know their names. I, wanna, I know Britt's name, but I want to know your, your, your other friend's name. Yes, Sorry, please. Oh. Jordan's? He's past president. Brett is current president. Jordan. Nice I'll you. stand with my okay. arm behind you. <laughs> People will <Yeah>. talk. <laughs> Scoot over just a little bit. There. There we go. Okay. You can also hit <clears throat> After all the frivolity, we're going to, we're going to proclaim uh, Life Insurance Awareness Month. Okay, so this is a City of Waterloo, Iowa proclamation. Whereas life insurance helps safeguard families' financial security and nearly 80% of U.S. households have some form of life insurance coverage. And whereas the life insurance industry is a primary source of financial and retirement security to more than 75 million American families. And whereas the life insurance industry pays billions to beneficiaries each year, and whereas life insurance benefits are a tremendous source of financial relief and security to families who have lost a loved one, and whereas many Americans lack adequate life insurance coverage or have no life insurance at all. And whereas during the times like these when many families are struggling, life insurance is more important than ever in the event of a premature death. And whereas September 2014 has been designated as Life Insurance Awareness Month with a goal of making consumers more aware of their life insurance needs. And now, therefore, I, Buck Clark, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, do hereby, do hereby proclaim September 2014 as Life Insurance Awareness Month and ask our citizens to learn more about life insurance and its benefits. Who gets this? Jordan, Britt, one of you, okay. You. Whoever gets that, and then the other person has to say a few words. How about, how about that? So. <laughs> there you go. Okay, it's on. Just speak into it. Thank you, Mary Clark. Uh, again, uh, as he mentioned, I'm not sure there's anything else I can add to that. Uh, there's quite a few whereases in there, but um, we just uh, wanted to make this an educational event for everybody in, in the city of Waterloo, uh, really to get out and educate yourselves on the important, uh, importance of life insurance and what it can really mean to the financial stability and security of your family. So uh, if you do not already work with a uh, qualified life insurance agent, uh, please seek one out. Uh, and uh, the three of us would be happy to take any questions uh, from anybody you know, later on tonight. So thank you very much. And, and you're welcome. And, and if you don't sign up or seek out, Mary's going to whack you with her with her hands. So, okay. sure. gentlemen, with her good hands. Thank you. Thank you very much, Britt. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I will also very quickly, I don't see Joe here, Dan, is he not coming up? Uh, Joe Leibold was our September team member of the month. Uh, Joe Leibold is a captain on our police department, has been with us for many years now, and Joe just does a fabulous job in all of the things that he does in the police department. Most recently, I know he's worked very actively with Chris and Roger uh, and the folks with the uh, the air show to make the, uh, that uh, another uh, resounding success. So congratulations to Joe Leibold, the September team member of the month. And Chris and Roger, and uh, you guys want to come up? Sure. Come on up. Come, come on up here and, and just come through the, it, it's Bill, right? Bob. 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 Sorry. Bob. Like Bill. Yeah, so yeah. Bill has more hair. <laughs> 
Uh, these are the gentlemen, uh, uh, for those of you that, that may not, come on up and just kind of stand around me like Mary did here, if you would, please. Of course. Can I pull my hand behind <laughs> yeah, your back? You can if you want to. That, that would be more suspect than Mary, but, uh, That's a but anyway, uh, uh, these folks, uh, it's impossible to tell you how hard Chris and Roger and Bob have worked uh, to put on this most recent air show, and the first one, the, uh, as far as that goes, 2011 and now again in 2014. Uh, it's an incredible amount of work and coordination and effort that it takes to put on uh, this kind of, a, uh, of an event uh, for Waterloo and the Cedar Valley and all of Northeast Iowa and all of the, the, the surrounding area. So you guys uh, did an incredible job, and you. and you have something to say today, uh, Roger. Or, um, uh, well, I want to, Chris. I'm not sure exactly what, but go ahead, please. I, I want to acknowledge, Mayor, that you and your council and your distinguished part, uh, partners in the departments have done what I think any city in America would be proud to have done, uh, from the police department to the fire department to public works to your office. Um, we have received the greatest cooperation we possibly could have, and it's always on the fly. The, the last details of any air show come crashing in <laughs> at the last minute. They are not the kind of things that you can anticipate. And when it called for uh, emergency action on the part of either the air show uh, or the airport personnel or public works, we were able to pick up the phone call and get a, a very cooperative okay. response. So we're very grateful for that. The president of Kiwanis, Bob Lentz, has a uh, commemorative lithograph from the Golden Knights that is presented to you uh, for the Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau. And the Golden Knights are, are a little more stingy with their uh, with, with their <laughs> lithographs. <laughs> uh, so I, you're going to have to share that. Oh, I, I think we, we, we can do that, though. Uh, the other uh, is from the Thunderbirds. This is presented to the Honorable Buck Clark as the chief elected right. official for the city of Waterloo. And uh, we hope you will put it uh, in a prominent place where we can remember that we hosted a jet team when no community our thank size you. ever has. Thank you. So thank you very congratulations much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much for all of you, Bob. Thank you. I'll, I, will, uh, I, I will accept these on behalf of, of all of those folks that you mentioned. Uh, uh, I have a, uh, uh, a Thunderbirds photo in the office. I will put the, uh, the, the uh, Golden oh, Knights nice. next to it. And uh, this one will go in my office, and they will all hang very proudly. Thank you guys very thank much. You. And I'm going to sit them right here for thank the rest you. of the council. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Can't see it. Take a selfie. Mr. Mayor. Let me get my notes together here, Mr. Hart, and then, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we receive, place on file, and approve the consent agenda items 1A through B23. Also, with the approval of the consent agenda, I move that we make our bills payment, which will be read by our finance chair. The bills this week are $1,003,500.67, one comma zero zero three comma five zero zero point six five. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding consent agenda? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. Yes, uh, Director Trauka, um, with uh, item uh, B13, Westside Liquor, a uh, new license, I understand that that's uh, grandfathered it, even though it's new license. Uh, have there been uh, many calls <coughs> regarding that property being as just a couple doors down from the Honeycomb Hideout? Deanne Trout, the Director of Safety Services. I would have to uh, check Mr. Morris. I don't know exactly how many calls we've had there, but okay. I can uh, run that and let uh, the council know. Okay, thank you. Further questions? Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote, please. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. 
Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hurt? Yes. I have the motion carries. Item number two, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Uh, Schmidt. Item number two, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing and ask for the development agreement with the Waterloo Community School District for the sale and conveyance of city-owned property for one dollar, generally located at 1601 and 1624 Blackhawk Street for the development of a new bus barn and maintenance facility. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections on file to item number two? Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak either for or against the, uh, the school district uh, uh, property conveyance? Second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments or concerns regarding this item? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion? I'm sorry? Can we add planning and zoning's recommendation on that? Where would you like to add it? No, we had planning and zoning's recommendation on that one, didn't we? Then will you add? Sure, yeah, and add with the uh, approval of the planning and zoning commission. Thank you. That okay. Uh, I'm sorry, no. No? No. That one wasn't approved for? Okay. I'll Sorry. rescind that motion. <laughs> Second. Okay, so uh, with that conversation, the motion stands as read initially with the, with the uh, initial second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution and authorizing said sale and conveyance and authorize the city attorney to prepare and deliver deed accordingly. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Wolper? Yes. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Just small interruption. Jim, you say you can't hear. Who can't you hear? Steve. Steve. Put the mic. That work? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. That work? Hello? Okay. Uh, if we could all talk into our mics, uh, that better? the audience, I'm sure, would appreciate that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Schmidt, could you read the last one, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution in approving said development agreement and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. Second. Madam Clerk, that's a roll call vote also. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Wolper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Item number three, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart? I move to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing for the request of the City of Waterloo to appeal the City Code requirement prohibiting vehicles from parking on the City on on the city-owned right-of-way located along 15th Street between Blackhawk Street and the Cedar River. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries, and that hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections to item number three? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against item number three? A second time. Mr. Mayor, I move to close the hearing. Second. This one needs the recommendation. And to uh, along and, and approve uh, motion to receive and file. Okay, motion to close the hearing and to receive and file oral and written comments from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Recommendation of approval from planning. And the recommendation of approval from planning. Second. All in favor, please say aye. I'm so uh, uh, Council, do you have any questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Both same sign. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution approving the appeal to allow parking on the city-owned right-of-way located along 15th Street between Blackhawk Street and the Cedar River. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Very good. Motion carries. Item number four, please. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Hart? I move to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing for the request of Waterloo Community School District to vacate approximately a 300 by 20 portion of public alley located within block 18 of Hayes Edition, generally located between West 14th Street and West 15th Street, north of Blackhawk Street, to allow the development of a new bus barn and maintenance facility. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries, and that hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections on file of this item? There were none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against item number four? A second time. Mr. Mayor, I move to close the hearing 
and uh, receive and <laughs> motion to close the hearing and along with the and approve the recommendation of approval of planning programming and zoning commission. Second. I don't know why that's. <laughs> Is this the first time we've done this? Yeah. <laughs> Council, do you have any questions regarding this one? Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, Mr. Morrissey. Yeah, uh, Noel, uh, in the material that was handed out um, and, uh, uh, in the colored uh, portion, it has different uh, colors indicating who gets what. And I was just curious, uh, what is that dotted green line uh, there uh, that uh, on the paper is on the north side of the properties with the different colorations. What is that dotted line indicate? Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. The dotted line along the north side is, uh, that's approximately where the foot of the levee is. So what we were trying to figure out is we have to be a certain distance away from the foot of the levee by Army Corps of Engineers standards. That's why the city retained some of the ownership in that area and gave by a permanent easement. Um, to the school system to go along with the site is we didn't want to have to try and delineate exactly where that line was nor mess around with the Army Corps of Engineers. They, uh, they, did, re they did see this and, rec and approve it the way that we submitted it with the easement area and the transfer of, of property, so. Okay, thank you. Further questions? Good one, Pat. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same <laughs> sign. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance vacating approximately a 300 by 20 portion of public alley located within block 18 of Hayes Edition, generally located between West 14th Street and 15, West 15th Street, and north of Blackhawk Street. Second. Madam Clerk, please, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, move to suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Council. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to consider and pass for the second and third time and adopt ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilker? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item number five, please. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole? I move to receive and file proof of publication of the notice of public hearing. On the request of Joanna Valencia and Sergio Rangel for the sale of a new construction home located at 1019 Lafayette Street and convey real, of, real property for $95,100 through the Neighborhood Stabilization Program. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries and that hearing is now open also. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections on file item number five? Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak either for or against item number five? A second time. I move that we close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. I move we adopt a resolution authorizing said sale and conveyance and authorize city attorney to prepare and deliver deed accordingly. Second. Madam Clerk. Ms. Cole. Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Yes. Lynn, yes. Morrissey, yes. Walker, yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Good. The motion carries. Item number six. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number six, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that's for the request of Gre Gregory A. Sykes and Jessica Hoffman for the sale of a new construction home located at 919 Lafayette Street and convey real property for $121,000 through the Neighborhood Stabilization Program. Second. Very good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. That motion carries, and that hearing is now open also. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections on file? There were none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against item number six? A second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution and authorizing said sale and conveyance and authorize city attorney to prepare and deliver deed accordingly. Second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Uh, resolutions, please. Let's take the first three, please. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Morrissey? 
I'd like to make a resolution approving reconstruction overlay street improvement list for 2015. Number eight, a resolution approving Convention and Visitors Bureau board recommendations for uh, funding of hotel motel tax mini grant application in the amount of one million or one thousand nine hundred dollars to Toastmaster International District 19 Fall Conference, which is November 13th and 14th, 2014. And number nine, a resolution setting date of hearing is September 15, 2014, to approve an exchange agreement and assignment of real estate contract between the City of Waterloo and LNH Farms Limited of Waterloo, Iowa, for the acquisition of property in Blackhawk County for exchange of property in the San Martin Tiff District in the amount of $131,949 for 2.75 acres of land in September of 2014, plus up to $10,000 in closing costs and instruct city clerk to publish notice. Second. Very good. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding seven, eight, or nine? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lynn. Number nine. Yes, no, sir. No. Do I understand this right? We buy three acres of land for every acre we get from him to replace it. Is that what we're doing? 3.21. It's a 3.21 to 1 ratio for the cost of what they, they'll appraise the land out in the county that they're buying for the exchange um, agreement, and then we'll pay 3.2 on that price um, for the land near the Highway 20. And I wasn't here when you did this agreement, but why? What, what was the reasoning we were buying that much land to replace his land? We tried to look at what uh, land was selling for in the agricultural uh, land at that time when the agreement was struck um, versus what we thought the land was worth near Highway 20 in the business park area, and the 3.21 was agreed to by both parties. Obviously, um, land values have gone up since the original acquisitions, um, but we're, we believe we're still in line with about where they're appraising at. Do we, are we gonna continue on with this acquisition? It is an eight year agreement, so we're about four to four and a half years through this. Um, we've acquired about 77 of the 129.5 acres. Um, so we're a little ways ahead of, of halfway, but uh, we're, we're about halfway through the agreement. Okay. Council, any other questions? Oh, um, excuse me, roll call vote on those three, please, Madam Clerk. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Walper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Very good. The motion's carried. The next three, 10, 11, 12, please. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Walper? Number 10 is a resolution approving memorandum of agreement regarding prorating of real estate taxes with LNH Farms Limited of Waterloo, Iowa, and authorized Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. Number 10 is a resolution approving participation in the National Household Travel <laughs> Survey in the amount of $30,456 and authorized Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. Number 12 is a resolution resetting the date of public hearing as September 15, 2014 for the proposed resolution of necessity and assessment in conjunction with the fiscal year 2015 sidewalk repair assessment program, Zone 4, contract number 864. Second. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding 10, 11, or 12? Roll call vote, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Could somebody please read uh, the amended item number 13? Mr. Mayor. Mr. C uh, Hart? Move that we receive, file, consider, and pass for the second time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 has amended City of Waterloo Zoning Ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in Section 10-4-4, approving a site plan amendment on certain property for a request by High Development of Cedar Rapids, Iowa for a site plan amendment to the S1 Shopping Center District to allow for the construction of five 12-unit multifamily dwellings generally located south of 200 East Ridgeway Avenue. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding this motion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm sorry, this is a roll call. It's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Yes. Very good. Uh, before we read the second motion, it, Council, just a, a little explanation. And it, you might have gotten a copy from these uh, folks today asking to suspend the rules. If you'll remember this, these two, 13 and 14, are the two items that are being sent to Des Moines for the uh, uh, the state uh, uh, round six flood buyout money. Uh, there has been no objections to date for either one of these two, and both of them are anxious to get started on, on this work. So 
14 is not. 13? 14 is not. I'm sorry. Cancel my all of that rant. Just item 13. It's not 13 and 14. But I'm sorry, Mr. Schmidt. But, and I appreciate that. So what you're saying is for item number 13 as part of the application process with the state, that needs to be done? That's what I heard you say. I, I don't know that it, I don't know if it needs to be done, no, or not. Do you know? I, the, the developer is requesting it be done because he's anxious to get started. Mm -hmm. And obviously, every delay, uh, I don't know if it has to be done for that to be sent down or not. The question was, do, do they believe it needs to be done for the state process? Yes. Um, I, I don't believe that we know that it has to be done. He just thought it would, it would look better if it was done. And his point was, since there's no opposition at the, this hearing, this meeting, or the one before that, and there was only two people at Planning Commission, he thought that, that there'd been given ample time for the public to come forward and be opposed to it. Since there was no opposition, he'd like to see it move forward. Thank you. Very good. Now, Mr. Hart. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move to suspend the rules. Second. It's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Motion carries and rules are suspended. Mr. Mayor, I move to consider and pass for the, fir for the third time and adopt ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Yes. Very good. Motion carries. Council item 14, please. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole. I move we receive file, consider, and pass for the second time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 as amended city of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10-4-4, approving a site plan amendment on certain property. And that concerns the request by Brent <coughs> Hallstrom of Cedar Falls for a site plan amendment to the R3RP planned residence district to allow for the construction of 11 duplexes located on lot 76 of Summerlin Park, first edition. Second. Council, do you have any questions? Madam Clerk, please, it's a roll call vote. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Mr. Hart? Yes. Good, the motion carries. I move we suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. If I could just ask a question. Um, as I understand it, this, this particular development, I think we're all aware of uh, some concerns in the Summerland area about another potential development. Mm -hmm. But this particular development, as I understand it, will actually improve or enhance the water flow in that area. Is that a that's accurate statement? That, that is certainly the intent, uh, Mr. Schmidt, and there is a detention pond that's part of this that uh, hopefully a large part of the runoff that is now running off into the Summerland area is going to now run to this detention pond. So that is certainly the hope. And I know Mr. Dahlstrom has had more than one meetings with the folks from Summerland. Uh, and this particular project, uh, to my knowledge, has not received any objection. As I understand, I think several of us have talked to yeah. neighbors out there that, uh, yeah, I, th I believe they're supportive of this, and I don't see anybody here tonight, so I would assume that would be the case. Right. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, uh, with that, are there further comments? Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Yes. Very good. The motion carries. I move we consider and pass for the third time and adopt the ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. We are on to item 15, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number 15 is a motion to instruct the traffic operations superintendent to prepare plans, specifications, form of contract, etc. And that's for the San Martin Drive and LaPorte Road traffic safety improvements. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding this item? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file plans, specification, form of contract, etc. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? <laughs> the motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution preliminarily approving plans, specification, form of contract, etc. Second. Madam Clerk, this is a roll call, please. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. 
Barker? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Schmidt, I'd like to adopt a resolution and setting the date of bid opening as September 11th, 2014, and the hearing as September 15th, 2014, in conjunction with the San Martin Drive and LaPorte Road Traffic Safety Improvements, and instruct the city clerk to publish notice of plans, specifications, for a contract, etc. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. <coughs> yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Uh, 16 on the amended agenda, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. C uh, Hart? I move to adopt a resolution resetting date of bid opening as September 11, 2014 and public hearing as September 15, 2014 in conjunction with the FY 2015 Sidewalk Repair Assessment Program, Zone 4, contract number 864. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding this? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Welper? Didn't I just read this on number 12? Um, there are two different. One is for bid opening and one is for resolution of necessity. They're the same project for mm -hmm. two different hearings. Gotcha. Okay. So roll call vote, please. Mr. Welper? Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. We want you to miss out. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our regular We want you to miss tonight. Uh, it's time for oral presentations. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to speak to the mayor or council, now's the time to do so. Please just step to the microphone and give us your name and address. And please limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you. Forest Dillevue, 1725 Huntington Road. Under public hearings number two, the deal with the schools. I was under the impression that the schools was going to give us the orange school in exchange for this property. It doesn't say so in this development agreement, but is it in our copies or in the total agreement? It, it is, Forrest. Uh, it, it, it's, they will give us the orange school property and they will demolish the current buildings that are out there. That is part of the development agreement. That is the exchange. Okay. It, it doesn't show me here and I just wanted to know yeah. if it was still there. Yeah, it, that is part of it, or that is the, the, the agreement. So, yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. School, though. They're taking it down. Yeah, they're yeah. taking it down. Right. We're not taking the school. I mean, we're taking the property. We're, we're taking the property. That's correct. With with it bare. Bare. Yes. Yes, sir. Randy here at 111 High On. <coughs> um, is there an existing report that comes out monthly that it shows the distribution of the animals to the Waterloo, Waterloo uh, Animal Control System? And if so, when will that be available to the public to pick up monthly? Sandy, I, I don't know. Yes, uh, I'll have. Can you let me know, and I'll let Randy know. Okay. Awesome. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, motion to receive and file oral comments and adjourn. Second. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. Thank you.